hey what's going on guys check it out real quick i just wanted to show you a few ideas or a few examples of soloing over a 2-5-1 progression some go-to ideas some phrases that i use frequently just to get you over that hump of soloing over a 2-5-1 progression which is the most common progression known so grab your bass and let's go but hey guys real quick before we get into it if you haven't visited the bass nation academy by now i strongly suggest you go do so there's much more available at derekbennett.com so first and foremost if you guys are here you should know what the 2 five, one progression is in order to solo over it so i'm going to go over it really 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 quick you have d minor seven g7 c major seven see that was really quick so usually when you hear the two five one progression in a tune or in a song usually hear that d minor seven at first for one bar the g7 for another bar if you're in a key of c obviously um d minor seven for one bar g7 for the next bar and the c major seven for the next two bars so it'll go something like this so we have So it'll go one bar, one bar, two bars, right? So you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You get it? Other times you'll hear that progression play really, really quick. So a half a bar. So you hear that D minor seven for two beats. You hear the G seven, excuse me, G seven for the next two beats. And then the C major seven for the next measure. So something like this. So instead of having that D minor seven for uh, a whole measure, you cut that in half and share that space with the D minor seven and the G seven. Usually when you're playing that progression and it goes by fast like that, you can't do the same exact phrase that you would do on the progression that would hold out the chord. Say for instance, the D minor seven for one measure, you have a longer amount of time to be able to come up with a phrase or to play a phrase inside of that measure. So for an example today, I wanna to show you guys the two, five, one progression using that D minor seven and G seven split between one measure. Like I said before, the D minor seven gets two beats, the G seven gets two beats, and then for the next measure, the C major seven gets that. So let's try it, let's do a little slow. So we have, So D minor seven, G seven, D major seven. So what I like to do, what I've found out, for the first chord, the two, you can use a Dorian scale, hence the two, five, one. So two is for the Dorian, five is for the Mixolydian, and one is for the Ionian. So uh, major scale starting on C, and then the C major scale starting on D for the D minor, then the C major scale starting on G. Simple as that. Okay, so I can use that Dorian scale for the whole entire duration of this progression so let me show you exactly exactly what I mean so and it fits perfectly and the way to the way to be able to make it fit that nice is a nice way to do it is to end on the major third or that third of that chord that you end on so for instance we have the C major 7 I'm ending on the E which is the third of C major. The third just really, really, really sounds nice when you end on that as a chord tone to end that measure on the one. So you have Okay, so I'm just playing through that chord progression. So the D Dorian scale. Not playing any fancy patterns or anything like that. I'm just playing through the scale, using it to my advantage. And then ending on that nine of the D minor, which would be the E, which happens to be the third of the C major. And it just lands very nice. That's one way to do it. It's a very, 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 very simple way. So that's one way to play around the 2-5-1 progression. Let me play it one more time. One more time. So another way to maneuver around that progression is actually a lot similar to what we just did. We're starting on the D, but we're playing the arpeggio instead of the scale. So we're playing the D minor 7 arpeggio. And then we're going down that scale, that same scale, until we get to the third of C major. And it ends up fitting perfectly. So. That's the lick. Very common. 
So there's several ways you can play this. I'm just starting the arpeggio with my fourth finger. So you have D, F, A, C, then walk it back down. Walking it down that same exact Dorian scale or that same exact scale, the C major scale. Same exact way. So don't get confused on when I'm saying Dorian or Mixolydian or 2-5 the same scale we're in the key of C major we're using the same exact chord tones and the chord symbols in the notes inside of that scale so C D E F G A B C is going are going to be included inside of whatever we do so we have D F A C walk it back down B A G F E same thing right so you don't have to worry about accidentals or anything like that so that's one way let's do it again So those are a few ideas that you can use over that 2-5-1 progression when it's in that rhythm, that specific rhythm when you have the D minor 7 and the G7 split between one measure for two beats, right? Don't forget the first one. We did the Dorian scale all the way up to the E, the, the third of the C major scale. Right. So I'll have this backing track um, available for you guys. I'm just playing the chords over it um, just so you can hear what it sounds like on top of that. So I want to dive deeper into developing these solo techniques and eventually for you guys to be comfortable enough to create your own. So that's what the next set of lessons linked to this lesson is going to be about. Just developing your solo technique, being comfortable enough to solo or to be on stage or to be asked to solo. I get a lot of questions from you guys, ton of questions about soloing. So I hope you guys are ready. Make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. Take it slow, and I'll see you guys in the next one.